Um, so I first want to thank you, Barbara, uh, and welcoming everyone. Thank you all uh, for coming on a Saturday evening. Um, apologies for being a tad bit late. I was sharing uh, with your son on the drive down. It is pouring cats and dogs up in the Bay Area. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so my flight was delayed because of weather. Uh, but, but thank you so much for, uh, for coming out and, uh, and for uh, waiting. Um, you know, interesting. I came to Emerge California almost 10 years ago because of the death of my brother, Victor Ellis. Uh, Victor was my number one champion and one of my best friends uh, and he was more like um, a son to me than he was a brother. My mom had me when she was 16 uh, and, uh, and my brothers, uh, I have two brothers, Victor and Patrick, uh, we were seven and eight years apart and so while they were off sort of growing up, I was raising my brothers and so uh, when he passed away almost nine years ago of an incredibly rare form of cancer, uh, at the age of um, 28. Um, it was really devastating for me. And um, it was watching um, his death and watching him take his last breaths, seeing the more than uh, 1,000 people who came out to his funeral to talk about this man that they knew to be a man that led his life with purpose uh, and with love uh, and with so much humility. He played um, football for Alabama, University of Alabama. Um, and um, just to hear people talk about the kind of person he was, um, it was hearing that and it was really his death that gave me the courage to apply for the job at Emerge America, which changed my life uh, and led to me standing before you today. And um, when Vic passed away, he had a woman next to his side who I'm sure would have been his wife uh, if, if he had still been around. Um, her name was Jen. And um, this morning I started my day really early at about eight o'clock this morning. Had to go to Trader Joe's because there was no more eggs or uh, orange juice or milk. I have two kids, a 17-year-old uh, daughter and a 10-year-old son and a 45-year-old, if I count my husband, which sometimes I do. Um, so I went to the grocery store uh, and I, I cooked uh, turkey tacos before everybody got up to make sure that they had dinner for tonight and tomorrow. And um, so started, started my day really early and then ended up in San Jose about 2.30 this afternoon to speak to the Santa Clara County Democratic Central Committee. And it was pouring down raining there into the airport and so on and so forth. And so, you know, along this campaign trail, I've been running for about a year now, a little over a year actually. You know, you, you, know, you have your days, your ups and your downs. And this is one of those days where I was like, you know, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing right now? Is this really, you know, the, the journey that I'm supposed to be on? So I get on the airplane today <laughs> in Oakland uh, this evening, and a woman walked on the plane, and I immediately recognized her face. And we looked at each other, and I could see that she noticed me. And I said to myself, I, I know who that is. I know, because I, I see her face every day in my office. And, she, and so she, she, she looked at me and was like, yeah, there's something there. She sat down behind me, and I turned to her and I said, Jen. And she said, how do I know you? And I said, my brother Victor. And she said, oh my God. That was my brother's girlfriend. She rode with me, sat right next to me on the plane ride here. And so what I want to share with you all is that I am standing exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. And I just want to thank all of you. Um, um, I have been the executive director of Emerge California for the past seven years. Um, I have spent that entire time grooming and training and supporting other Democratic women to run for office. Why? Because I believe deeply uh, in my soul that the way that we will create the world that we all know is possible <coughs> is by getting more strong, pro-choice, democratic women elected and seated at, at decision-making tables to help us bring about the change that we know is possible. Uh, and so I have spent the past seven years building Emerge California from an organization that was really just a Bay Area organization that serviced about eight or nine counties in the Bay Area. 
Uh, and in the seven years that I've been there, we have quadrupled our budget. We have expanded statewide. We are now uh, in Northern California and also uh, down here in Southern California. We have a new strategic plan that has us by 2020, we will be in four regions. We will have a program that is truly Northern California that services from Sacramento all the way up to the Oregon border. Uh, we will have the Bay Area program. We'll have a third program in the Central Valley that's really focused on Latinas and getting more of that community uh, active and engaged. Uh, and then down here in Southern California. And so throughout those four regions, we look to be training upwards of 200 women every single year to run for and win elected office at the local level. Um, and for us, it's, it's, really, it's really simple. It's not even so much a matter of parity. Yeah. Having more women and having women at representative levels is important. But for us, this is really about impacting policy because we know, the research shows us that when you have those women, Democratic women specifically, um, seated at those tables, what you get out on the other end is policy and legislation that is more fair, more equitable, and more just for the entire community. And so for us, that's what this work is about. Uh, and so I have, um, I've been so blessed to be able to do work that I believe in to my core for the past seven years. Uh, and now I'm ready to take uh, my management skills, to take my inclusive and open leadership style uh, and my fundraising prowess uh, and help to move the California Democratic Party to its next level of greatness. I am running to be the next chair of this party. <laughs> um, And so there are several things that, that I want to, um, that I want to uh, do uh, at the party. I want to bring a new voice, a new vision, a new perspective, a new style of leadership. Um, but some of the things that I want to do, um, I've traveled to 40 of the 58 counties so far. And we have plans to hit all 58 of them at least once before this is over with. Uh, but having these kinds of conversations with the activists, with the people who show up on a Saturday night and during the week at the Central Committee meetings to find out what we need to do to make this party better. There were, I think, a lot of lessons to be learned coming out of November 8th. Uh, and uh, one of them, one of the things that I took away was that it is time for us as Democrats to be able to facilitate and have difficult conversations within our own home and also to tell hard truths. And the, one of the hard truths is that this Democratic Party is not as democratic uh, yes. as it should be, yes. right? Yes. Uh, and so I am running on a reform uh, platform to democratize the Democratic Party here in California. Um, and so what does that mean for me? That means opening this party up in a real way, not just reaching out to our communities of color, to our women, to our young folks when we need them to vote on election day. That means not just asking them to come and be a part of a photo op when we need to show diversity, right? That means including them and asking them to be a part of leadership. That means opening up our standing committees, opening up our caucuses, making sure that uh, we have as many voices as we can represented at those tables. Um, some of the other things that I've learned in traveling uh, across the state is that um, um, for our progressive and liberal and big blue uh, uh, progressive reputation here in California, I like to think of us as a state with blue coasts. Uh, but once you start digging in uh, a little bit to the east, we start turning purple, and we start turning red, uh, and then we have our rural counties. So one of the things that I think it's important for us as a party that, it, that, that cares about the long-term health and sustainability of the Democratic Party is to start investing in those counties. And so I wanna look at uh, providing resources uh, and tools to build out the infrastructure in those purple counties, in those red counties, in those rural counties, uh, so that maybe not in the next couple elections cycles. But further down the line, these counties will be able to turn out strong, viable Democratic uh, candidates. Um, and so that's one of the things that I, I want to do. I want to make sure that um, the, you know, sort of the big committees, if you will, platform rules, resolutions, uh, are made up of diverse uh, uh, perspectives and voices. Um, did you know, for example, that the chair of the party appoints everybody on those committees. Every single person on that committee is appointed by the chair. And all of the chairs of all of the committees are appointed by the chair of the party. Yeah, that to me doesn't seem democratic. 
And so I want to open that up. And so I want to talk and have an advisory council that talks about how do we how do we maybe do it a third, a third, and a third, where maybe the chair can appoint a third. We have another third that's either elected or what have you, and another third maybe that comes from the caucuses, right, right? to make sure that we have a representative body. Um, but those are, those are um, some of the things. I want to make sure that, you know, for me, as someone who has spent the last seven years grooming and training women, I understand deeply some of the challenges that women and women of color face when they run for office. I want to make sure that we are thinking right now about the next generation of political leadership that will hail from the great state of California, right? So what is our legislature going to look like in 2026 and 2028 when it turns over? Well, if we don't do any planning right now, if we don't start building the bench right now, we will get more of the same. And for, for the, you know, California is a minority majority state. The majority of people who live in California are people of color. That is not reflected in either our party leadership or in our elected leadership. We have to change that. Uh, and as the next chair of this party, I will prioritize making sure that when those conversations are being held with, with the leadership, with the, with the uh, uh, Speaker of the Assembly, with the uh, President Pro Tem of the Senate, that it's not just you know Tom, Dick, and Harry who are running, right? But it's also uh, uh, Fatima, and it's you know Joan, and it's Sarah, and it's you know making sure that when they're thinking about those people who are running, that there are diverse people that are also in that conversation as well. Um, that is how we will make sure that our elected leadership truly reflects the beautiful diversity uh, that California has to offer. Um, and so those are just um, some of the things that, that I've been um, wanting to talk about in terms of bringing change to the party. Um, I believe that um, one of the reasons why the, the new American majority, which is made up of three demographics, single women, people of color, and millennials. The reason why they are running away from this party, the reason why they are not registering as Democrats but as declined to state, no party preference, is because they don't see a big difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. Um, and so for me, this is about redefining what it means to be a Democrat. This is about getting back to basics. This is about remembering who we are, what we stand for, and what our values are. Uh, and so it's, this is a, a period, I believe, of rebuilding. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I want to do uh, as chair is to use my bully pulpit to hold to account those Democratic elected officials who have come and got our endorsements, they have taken our money, we have helped with through our labor unions and our activists to, to knock on doors and to phone call to get them elected, and then they get elected and then they forget who got them there. It is, I believe, it is our job as a party, it will be my, one of my primary jobs as the chair of this party to call that out and to hold them accountable. Uh, California is a trailblazer state. We do not follow trends, we set the trends. And this is an opportunity for us to redefine and to stand strong and firm in our progressive values. We should be leading on all of the issues, not just some of them. Uh, and so that's one of the things that, that I plan to do is to call that out and talk about our progressive values and to uh, make sure our elected officials who we have put in office remember that. Uh, and so again, I think this is a time and an opportunity uh, for us to have conversation and be in community about the changes that we want to see. Um, this for me is about um, building this party in a new way, in a sustainable way for the future uh, so that um, uh, we can be proud um, and, uh, and and remember what it means to be a Democrat because I think a lot of a lot of people, at least at the upper levels, have forgotten that. And so uh, I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and to get to work uh, and to help redefine what it means to be a Democrat and in the process bring so many new voices, new perspectives, uh, new faces to the table. Um, and so with that, if it's okay, I'd like to stop talking <laughs> and um, and then open it up for uh, for questions. Great. If that's okay. Yeah.